up getting sick, and then we've had a few other things go on. But I just want to say, as you come on, <laughs> we'll give them a second to to get to get out. But uh, while they're doing that, yeah, I can't I can't express uh, how amazing it was to to experience uh, the Extreme Conference again. We went the year prior. It was absolutely amazing. Then there was a, a far less amount of people there than there was this time. But as you said, like with that many, that many people in one place, just praising God and and the the bands that were there, like it, it just it really rocked the house, right? And it just it really resonated with me, kind of uh, because I mean, as me and Jonathan were talking, you know, long long talks on the balcony, as you said in the first service, and talking with the uh, the the youths and and just kind of being able to reflect and just it w- it was really needed at least in my in my opinion right because I this whole year has kind of been uh, a little bit of a downer you know like would we all can we all agree that 2020 2021 is kind of a kind of a downer and if I were to sit here and, and ask you are you guys pumped up for 2022 how many of you would jump up out of your seats right now and be like yeah 2022 let's go right. And so it, 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 really, it really recharged the batteries, right, spiritually speaking. And then we get back, and then we all get sick. And then I've missed church for two weeks, and, and, it, just, and it just feels like, like, you know, we're being attacked, right? We're just consistently under attack. And, and I'll be honest with you, it, it, is, it, it gets wearisome. It gets tiring at times, right? And so that's where my message was, was headed originally, right? I had planned out this whole you know, pump for 2022, what's your New Year's resolutions, let's make some New Year's resolutions that, that'll benefit us, right, but then I, I ended up, uh, I wanted to illustrate, you know, how awesome Christ was, I wanted to illustrate how great God was, right, at least, because for me, it's like, you know, I get to wake up every single morning, and I, and, and I get to serve a God that is infinite, that is immutable, that is powerful, that is gracious, that is wonderful, that is forgiving, that just has infinite amounts of mercy, right? And then the fact that he chose me, just, it just rattles me down to the core because, uh, I mean, uh, like I've said to, to many of you before, my testimony goes a long way, right? I went in a, in a 180 degree opposite change of direction from, from where I am. And I look at that and I just, I, I can't help but thank God that I'm just part of his plan. And so I landed in Ephesians on that uh, to try to, because it was just, you know, he, he talks about he's far above principalities, he's awesome and great, and he resurrected Christ from the dead. And I had a bunch of other verses that, that all kind of just seemed to fade away. As I kept praying for those two weeks while I was on quarantine, I just kept praying that, like, you know, the Spirit would just deliver a message, right? That it wouldn't be my message, that you wouldn't see me in the pulpit today, but that you would just hear the words of the Holy Spirit, that you would just hear the words of God and that I would just be used as a vessel, right? And so that's where we're going to be at. And really, honestly, I wanted to read the entire chapter of Ephesians 1, right? <laughs> but, you know, I'll, I'll spare you. I won't keep you here all day. But uh, in context, right, I'll give you a little bit of context and then we'll be in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 through 23, all right? And it goes a lot quicker than, than you think, all right? But before we start, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give, give a prayer, just give a praise to, to our God. Lord, Heavenly Father, Lord, as we get into your word right now, Lord, I pray that, that you would again just impart spiritual wisdom on us, Lord, that you would again just bring a revelation to us, Lord, that you would just enlighten the eyes of our heart, Lord, that we would just be receptive to what you have to offer for us, Lord, that we would be willing to relinquish the control, Lord, that we would place our faith in you, Lord, and that we would walk away from this strengthened, rejuvenated, encouraged, Lord, and just full of understanding of how infinite your grace is. I pray all this in Christ's powerful name. Amen. And so, as I started off last, last sermon, right, so we'll, we'll, we'll jump in. I'm, again, the entire chapter, right, is packed full of great theology, right? Great stuff. Um, and so, in verses 1 through 15, or 1 through 14 really, right, Paul is, is, is preaching to the church in Ephesus, right? And he's highlighting, right, the fact that they, they are an established church, all right, and that they, they are a people of faith, 
right? So they have all these good things going for them, right? But he just wants to take a little bit of time when he opens up to kind of really drive in just how magnificent our spiritual blessings are this far in our life, right? And I, and I kind of package it a little bit more manageable, something to this effect, right? So he has blessed us immensely. He has chosen us unconditionally. He's adopted us adorningly. He redeemed us graciously. He forgave us completely. He gave us grace lavishly, right? He says lavishly. He revealed his mystery wisely. He granted us an inheritance eternally. He sealed us permanently, and he guaranteed our salvation personally. And so, as Paul talks about all of these spiritual blessings that we have that manifest in our physical life through Christ, right? He then gets into the purpose of the opening of this, of this chapter, right? Chapter 1. And so then he goes into 15. He says, Wherefore, I also hear of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints. Cease not giving thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spiritual wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. And the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling, and what is the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of His power in usward who believe according to the working of His mighty power, which He wrought in Christ when He raised Him from the dead and set Him at His own right hand in the heavenly places, far above principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also that which is to come. And has put all things under His feet and gave Him to be the head over all things to the church, which is His body, the fullness of Him that filleth all in all. And so, as I was reading this, I couldn't help but just like, I just felt like I could take over the world with that. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if it resonates for you the same way, but I'm hoping that by the end of this service, you'll see it in the same light that I do. And that's my attempt today, is to try to bring that energy that I feel when I read these scriptures, knowing that, that Jesus reigns supreme, that He is above all, right? And that we are His we are His, right? He is, this, is, this is for us, right? So this message is, is aimed at, at, at us, Christians, right? The, the, body, the body and the church, right? But I feel like it also works both ways because when we kind of start to break some of this stuff down, we can see how we can manifest this in our own lives on a daily basis, right? And so I'll jump back up to verse 15, right? Verses 15 and 16. And so it was one of those things that, that I, had, I had thought a lot about, right, was, was how do I impact my church? How do I, how do I get the most bang for, for the buck, right? And it's simple. It's right here, highlighted in 15 and 16. What is Paul doing for this church in Ephesus, right? He's not, he's not offering them, you know, more congregation to fill the pews. He's not giving them massive amounts of money, you know. He's offering them prayer, right? He's offering them one of the most precious and one of the most powerful weapons that we have as Christians is prayer, right? He says that I've heard of your faith, right? And I, and I have love unto all the saints, and I cease not in giving thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, right? So he's praying often, and he's, praying, he's giving thanks to God, first of all, for the church, which I can't, I can't express enough. I am extremely grateful for the church. Not just this church, but every church, everywhere, that is doing the work of God, right? And I think we ought to consider that in our prayers daily, right? And he has love for one another. He has love for the saints within the church, right? So it's not just, it's not just random for him. It's personal, right? And it's personal for me because I consider you all family. And, and like I said, I, you know, I, I'm hoping to bring, to, to bring that spark that we were talking about, set that fire that we just, 
just can't control, right? It shouldn't, we shouldn't be bottling it up. We should just be letting it out everywhere we go, right? But then I ask myself, what is the, what is the practical application for this prayer, right? Because like I said in the first service, this is the, the yes, but how, or the why, yes, how do, we, how do we accomplish this, right? Like, we all know what prayer is. We all know we should be reading our Bibles. We all know that we should be doing these, these we should have these spiritual disciplines that we have in our life, right? But how do we apply that? And then in verse 17 is where you get your answer. It says that the, the God of our Lord, Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you, right, the spirit of wisdom and revelation in knowledge of Him and the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Right? And I'll stop right there because just I, I kind of want to dwell on this just for a little bit. Right? Paul is praying specifically that within the church that we would gain spiritual wisdom and we would have revelation through an increase in knowledge of Him. Right? Of God. And so when we look at that, I kind of think of how, how do we do that? How, how do we accomplish this? How do we get to know God more, right? Because we can read Scripture, right? We can, we can, we can pray, right? All of those things are great, right? But if we, we lose focus, right? We don't, we, don't, we don't look at what we have physically in our lives, Right? That was one of the things that I had to do that helped me kind of come to a realization right, in the knowledge of Him. Right? As I looked, while I was reflecting at the conference, I was sitting up there on, on the balcony with Jonathan, and I kind of just spaced off for a little bit. <laughs> but I, w- I was just reflecting. It was just a quick moment, just a snap. It took probably about five minutes. right? And I just realized that we had come, like you had said, I'd, I'd come from walking through those doors, being brand new here, you know, stationed at Fort Benning, coming to this church, kind of not knowing, like I'm just kind of going through the motions, right? And I'm just praying, right? But then I prayed specific. And I prayed that God would open a door, that He would give me an opportunity to, to serve Him more, right? And then I get a phone call from, from Ron. They asked me to become a deacon. Right? And just a couple months after that, we go to the first extreme conference in, in 2021 uh, for New Year's. Right? And then just shortly after that, I, I take over as the youth director. And so, through all that, right, I look at all the stuff that we, we've been able, me and my wife have been able to accomplish just in that small amount of time in that year, over there in that small little room, right, with just a few kids. And how much fruit we've been able to produce. Just, just be able to witness what is going on over there. And it just, it's, it's amazing to me, right? The lives that, that we're able to impact. The things that we're able to do through Christ, right? Because we fully trust in Him. And then that's, that's really how I gain the knowledge of what I'm seeing in my life, right? And that's, that's, that's how I know that he's been with me, that he's working through, because it's not, it hasn't been, it's, it hasn't been just, you know, all peaches and rainbows this whole time. We've gone through difficulties, there's been struggles, there's been strife, and I'm sure that you can attest to that more so than I, than I can, right? There's people sitting out here, there's people watching right now that have lost loved ones in recent years, right? We've seen the devastation that coronavirus has caused within, within the church, not just Woodland Baptist, but churches everywhere. You know, there's still churches that are not allowed to congregate right now. There's still, there's still people that are getting uh, tickets or they're being arrested because they're congregating in the name of Jesus Christ. You know? And then we look at us and we're able to come here this, this Sunday. We have the freedom to come in this, in this building and freely worship, right? Or better yet, we can, you can look at churches that are international churches, like in China, the, the real persecution that they're enduring currently, right? It's illegal to praise. It's illegal to worship God over there. You'll get thrown in jail for it. And we're here in America and we, you know, we struggle to get up and just make it to church on Sunday or come to Wednesday nights, you know? And so I look at that, right? And then I start to think, okay, so 
we, we start to recognize, we start to know him, we start to gain more knowledge, we start to have this spiritual wisdom, right? What does that do for us, though? And it's that we may know the hope of his calling, right? The hope of his calling being, being us, right? Because Paul says you. And then he says later on here, we'll get into 19, he says that the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe. So Paul is talking about us, right, as Christians. He's talking about us as the church, right? And he's, he's, he's wanting us to come to this realization that there's a hope for us, that he is, that it says in, in early on in, in the chapter that he has chosen us before the foundation of the world, that he loved us before the foundation of the world, meaning that he knew before he even created the Genesis 1-1, he knew that you were going to exist and that he had a plan for you. Right? And this is God just working in his, his mysterious way all through up until this point in your life. Right? And then, but what was the purpose of it all, right? What was the purpose of it all? And he says, which he wrought Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. And so the purpose of us right, was to know him, right, and then Paul kind of drives this in, right, even more, right, this is, this is what I love about these verses right here, is that he starts to try to wake, wake everybody up, he starts to try to drive home just how magnificent, just how great God is, right, and he says, and with exceeding greatness, his, his power to us who who believe, right, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked or wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. And so I really just kind of want to sit there and dwell on that power. Let's, let, let us think about that power, right? So the power that God used to raise Christ from the dead also led me into Ephesians 2, 5, and 6, right? Which goes something like this. And he says, Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ." By grace we are saved, and he hath raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Right? Like, are you, are you hearing what I'm saying? He's the same power that God used to resurrect Jesus Christ is the same power that he used to bring you to life from, from dead. To bring you out of your transgressions and sin. It is the same power that dwells within you currently while you sit here right in these pews. It is the power of God through Jesus Christ. And so that's the point that I want to try to make, is that as we go through our walk in life, right, as we go through these tough times, as we go through these confusing times, right, because I don't, I don't know what God has in store for me. I just have trust and I have faith that no matter what, God is in control and that He's going to carry me to the victory that I'm going to cross that river, right? That one day I'm going to see the glory, the light that shines through Him. That I'm going to be in heaven, just like Pastor was talking about. Imagine, imagine 5,000 people, right? Just shaking the building, right? We got We the Kingdom, we got Skillet going off, we got Zach Williams, we got all kinds of, we got Johnny Hunt doing the sermons. Every, everybody's just recklessly abandoned everything they know, just hands in the air, screaming at the top of their lungs for Jesus. And the, uh, the awesome sight that we saw up there, just imagine that times a million, right? Because John says in Revelations, he looked out and it looked like a sea. It was just a vast expanse of people, millions of millions of people just praising God the Father and how awesome that day is going to be. And so that's, that's really why I landed on these, right? Because as we continue to go through 2022, I don't know what's going to happen. There might be, you know, we, Delta Cron, Omicron, Fluorona, there, you know, there might be some other kind of variant. There probably is going to be another variant. There's probably going to be more regulations. There's probably going to be more struggle and strife, right? And we're going to see things, right, as, as we continue, because every step, every, every minute, every hour, we're only getting closer right, to, to the second coming, right? 
either the second coming of Jesus or we're getting one, one, one step closer to being glorified in Jesus Christ, right, for those of us that are saved. And so we ought to move with a sense of purpose when we're out there, right? We shouldn't be, we shouldn't be walking around praying that, that God would just end it all, right? We're not, we're not praying that, that we, Jesus would come back right now because we're tired of dealing with it, right? That's not the mentality that we should have as Christians. We shouldn't be praying that God would just remove us from this world because we're just tired of dealing with it, right? Because he gives us a purpose. He, we have a hope for his calling, right? We're the inherit. Paul calls us, he says, the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. We are the saints. We are the inheritance, right, that he is talking about. And so as we move forward, we should come at it from a place of victory in Jesus Christ, knowing that he's already overcame death, and that the same resurrection power that raised Jesus Christ out of that grave, right, and seated him at his right hand, that's the same power that we harness as the saints. And we should walk around like that. We should be the ones with our chests puffed up. We should be, yeah, we're, we're, we own this, right? We should have our heads held high. That, there, that God is in control and that as we continue, He is going to continue to bless us immensely and in ways that we hadn't even imagined yet. And it, and it really helps to free up all that extra space that gets taken up by the unknown, right? All that unknown, right? I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't know how I'm going to pick my head up tomorrow. I don't know how I'm going to walk out of the door. I don't know how I'm going to pay the bills. I don't know how, I don't know this, I don't know that, right? Everything seems to be crumbling down around me. And it's hard, I get it. I deal with it too. That's, that's, why, that's why I feel that this is, this is where I landed. This is what was, was, was given to me to speak on today. Was because I need this motivation just as much as you do. If not more, right? Because I can get down in the dumps, I'll tell you what. I was down in the dumps for that two weeks. Because I I, we come back... On that spiritual high, batteries recharged, and then next thing it was just like, you got COVID, you can't be around nobody. And so I couldn't give, I, kept, I felt like I just wanted to give everybody that energy, and I couldn't do it. And there, uh, you know, I felt like I was on lockdown, and it was, you know. But I think that if we can harness this power, right, just imagine the church that wasn't afraid of anything. Imagine the church that wasn't, wasn't scared to get out and move and shake things in the name of Jesus Christ, that wasn't scared to get out and conduct the will of the Father, right? To give Him glory on a consistent basis. Imagine how powerful we would be. Not just Woodland Baptist either, but like the universal body of Jesus Christ, the universal church, right? That if believers just everywhere, you know, we fought from this place of victory. We stepped onto the field knowing that we were going to win, Right? Because that's one thing that I've learned through playing sports, through, through the, the line of work that I'm in, right? That if you come into a situation, right, and you're like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't think I'm capable of doing this. I, I'm probably just going to end up getting my tail whooped, so why even try? That mentality will usually, is, is usually when you see teams lose, right? It's usually when you see teams falter. That's usually when you see yourself falter, right? But knowing that Christ has already overcome the grave, right? We can use that power. We can use and harness that, right? Because we've already won. We've already won, people. We're good, right? And so if that's not enough for you, right? If that hasn't woken you up, if that doesn't juice you up, like I said earlier, I don't, I don't know. You probably, we've got to get you to Starbucks and get you a double, double shot of espresso or something because this, this is even more, right? He's given us even more, right? And Paul says, and this is, this is how I know, this is, the, this is the proof in the pudding, right? This is that when Christ was elevated to the right hand of God, God had placed him far above the principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. So Paul is stating here that he's faithful that God now has elevated Christ, that the work, the mysterious plan that God had 
from the Old Testament, Genesis, all the way until this point, has now been fulfilled, and Christ now sits at the right hand of God, and He is above everything. Principalities, right? Because in, in, in Ephesians 6, right, we, we talk about we're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities and darknesses in the heavenly realms, right? And these are battles that we cannot fight, people. These are battles that, that cannot be waged by physical means, that we cannot overcome with our fists, you know, our heads and our feet. We, we don't have the power to do that, right? We have to fight on a spiritual plane, right? We have to use spiritual weaponry. And that it's only through Christ that we're able to do that. And he's above, he's above all powers. Every name that's named. Not only in this world, right? The right now, the right here. But in what is, which is to come. So whatever God has in store for us in the future, he's also reigning supreme in that as well. And that's, that's, where, that's where our confidence needs to come from. That's where our faith needs to be increased. That's where we can start to witness and have revelations and see the knowledge of Him that if we would just stop trying to control everything all the time, because that's one of my biggest faults, is I like to control everything. I like to be in control. I like to say that I'm in control, right? But guess what happens when you're in control? You mess it up. You know what I mean? Has anybody ever messed anything up before in their life? Yep, right here, all the time. That's because I'm trying to control all of this stuff, right? Or you put, you, 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 know, you put faith in other people, right? Not saying that, you know, that we're bad people. However, if we put our faith and our confidence in ourselves or others, we will be let down. We will be let down. Because we have to give that control. We have to give that control to God. We have to be willing to accept that not everything... You know, whether it be good or bad, some of the bad stuff too, guess what? It's a blessing. You just haven't realized it yet. When you look back on it 10, 20 years from now, or even when you're glorified in the likeness of Jesus Christ and you're sitting there with, with Jesus looking over the expanse of time, and you're like, man, you were working at that lowest point in my life. You were there, and that was a blessing. Because like I had said to the, to, to the service before was, you know, that you could struggle. If I struggled my entire life and I, could, and I walked away with it, right, with my salvation and I, you know, I, I was glorified and I looked back on it and the only thing that I was able to accomplish in my life was that one soul was saved. Would that be worth it for you? It'd be worth it for me. You know what I mean? That'd be one more. It'd be one more, Right? And so that's where I feel the hope of his calling is. And I feel like that's how we can manifest that into, into reality. Is if we walk around with this confidence, that we, that we exude this confidence, that other people will see it. And be like, there's something different about you. There's something different about you. What is it? Right? It's because I, I, I live through Jesus Christ. I am, now, I am not dead anymore. I am now alive. And Christ reigns supreme. And that's why I'm not worried right now. So you can have your worry if you want, but I'll take Jesus every single time. I promise you that. I promise you that. And then not only that, I'll, I'll end with it focused, not just on us, right? Not just on the individual, because Paul is talking about us word who believe, right? He's talking about the church, right? And in 22, he has put all things under his feet, right? He's put all things under Jesus' feet and gave him to be the head over all things, to the church, right? Because the church is His body. So Christ is the head, we're His body, right? Below the body is the feet, and all things are under the feet, right? So as a church, right, we, sh- we have to have faith. We have to have confidence that we are the ones that are going to be victorious, that we are the ones that, 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 can, that can continue to... to be servants of God and that His will will continue to produce increase all around us, not just in our lives, but in our community as well, right? In that, in that one person that you may know at work, that one person that you run across in the store, right? That they, they drive by on the street here in front of Woodland and they see like, that church has it going on right there, right? That, 
they drive by all these other churches too and they're like, hey, there's something going on in there that I want to be a part of, right? That we start drawing more and more people, right? Through love, right? Through, it, through demonstration of, of His mercy, through demonstration of His grace towards others, right? And so, that's why I chose, well, I didn't choose. That's why God gave me Ephesians 1 to preach out of was because I feel that it, it, it's something, and I've read, I swear, I've read chapter 1 every day for two weeks straight, and it's, it, it has really softened my heart. It has really enlightened me. It has motivated me to the point where I don't, I don't want to be in control. I just, want to, I just want to scream and shout at the top of my lungs everywhere I go about my Jesus and how awesome He is and what He's done for me in my life and what He can do for you in your life. And so I'll close on that. And I just want you to carry that through the rest of this week, this, this month, this year. Just know that we're already victorious people. We are already winners. We have already, like, we are chosen to be here. We have, we're a part of His plan. And oh, what a wonderful plan it is. And it's going to be so glorious when we cross that finish line, when we get across that river. I promise you that. Every, every head bowed, every eye closed. Lord, I thank You so much for being the glorious Father, Lord, for being the One that chose me before the foundations of this world, Lord. Lord, for sending Your Son to die on the cross for us, Lord, with His atoning blood saving us, bringing us from death to life. Lord, and I just praise Your name. Having given, given us the same power that You gave Christ to resurrect Him out of the ground that day, Lord, and seating Him at the right hand, including us in Your inheritance, Lord, so gracious. Lord, so gracious. Lord, I can't thank You enough. Lord, and it just amazes me on a daily basis that you would have chosen somebody as lowly as me, somebody so undeserving of being recognized by an almighty God. But yet you did. You turned your eyes towards me. And you brought me from death to life. Lord, I love this church and I love my brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, and I pray that these words, Lord, that they would just resonate in our hearts, Lord, that they would just sharpen us, Lord, that they would give us increase, Lord, that we would get confidence, that we would experience spiritual wisdom, not earthly wisdom, Lord, Lord, but spiritual wisdom, Lord, that we would have revelations, that we would gain knowledge of you, Lord, that we would just take time to appreciate and reflect on instances in our life that are clearly evident that you've been there the entire time. Lord, I pray that you would continue to safeguard us, Lord. Lord, I pray that you would continue to just reign supreme. Lord, I pray that you would increase our faith. Lord, I pray that you would just continue to pour out your kingdom blessings on us. Lord, and that you would just continue to do mighty works. Lord, and that you would take all the glory and all the praise for everything. I pray all this in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen.